Leaving Mpanga Forest, I travelled by public transport from Mpigi via Kampala to Masindi. Here I hired a vehicle to spend two days in Uganda's largest national park, Murchison Falls. I spent two nights at the comfortable yet relatively cheap Yebo Safari Camp, which lies just outside the borders of the park. Here on the left is the open air restaurant. This was my large comfortable bed, complete with mosquito net, which unlike in many places did not have any holes in it. Game drives into any African parks usually start before dawn, so here we are at the entrance to the park with the sun just rising. Our hotel was on the south bank of the river, whereas most of the wildlife is on the north bank. So we had to cross the river. This is normally done by ferry, but because this was out of action, we were allowed to use the new bridge which was under construction. As in most Ugandan parks, the most common large mammal is the cob, a type of antelope. The large curved horns indicate that these are males. This is a bachelor group. The scenery here is typical of this part of Murchison Falls and this is the area where most mammals are found. The Oroby is one of Africa's smallest antelopes. This male is marking the grass with a scent gland positioned near his eye. The first patas monkey of the day. We'll see more of these later. The main food for giraffes is acacia trees. When you look at the length of the long white defensive spines, it's a miracle that the giraffe can actually cope with them. However, its 14 centimetre long tongue is extremely leathery and fairly resistant to penetration. And note how careful it is to nibble off the leaves, if possible, without touching the spines. A rather smaller whistling thorn acacia doesn't just employ spines for its protection, it actually recruits a standing army consisting of hordes of fierce ants. A few of the spines on each plant have a hugely inflated bulbous base and this provides a secure and comfortable home for the ants which spring to the plant's protection when it's disturbed by a caterpillar or a giraffe or any other animal. There's only a single species of giraffe in Africa, but it's split into several different races. This is the endangered Rothschild giraffe, characterised by its neat white stockings. The grey-crowned crane is Uganda's national bird. On the ground they're often very tame, but I only saw these flying. Mm. The Abdin stork often forms flocks of thousands, which follow recent rainfall, wildfires or the mass emergence of insects such as locusts or other grasshoppers. Note the beautiful shimmering purple iridescence as the bird moves. Whew. 
The hearty beef occurs widely through Africa and is split up into a series of different subspecies. This is the Jackson's hearty beast, distinguished by the shape of its horns. It's important to drive carefully in the park because of the number of cob on the road. We stopped for lunch near a remote ranger post, which meant we could leave the vehicle and sit in the shade of this tree. The person sitting in the chair on the left is the owner of Yabo Tours, who on this occasion had chosen to leave the office and act as my expert driver and guide. As it happened, we were in luck because the area around the tree was absolutely heaving with male red-headed agama lizards. They were just beginning to come into their full breeding dress of orange head and tail and blue body. The males are extremely competitive and constantly bob their heads at one another to establish ownership of a territory. If head bobbing doesn't prove sufficient to establish who's boss, then the whole thing escalates to actual physical combat, or it might just be a juvenile male who's yet to get involved in the action. The loser eventually retires. This could be one of the females they're fighting over. Back in the vehicle, we first encountered a small group of patas monkeys. This is a savanna species, which spends almost all of the time on the ground. A little further on, as we drew to a halt, this young Jackson's hearty beast ran towards its mother and began suckling. The African buffalo spends a lot of time wallowing in water and chewing the cud. In the end, this one decided he didn't like the look of us very much and ran off. Leaving the waterhole in sole charge of a group of drinking Abdin storks. This waterhole didn't like us being nearby but was quite happy with a bird on its back. In the orange glow of the late afternoon sun, we stopped by a termite mound with a patas monkey on top. And the female with a baby arrived. After the sun went in, see how the quality of the light has changed completely. It's much flatter. In between filming the monkeys, I spotted a Jackson's hearty beast running off nearby. By now, the Patas monkeys have settled down to grooming. With just sufficient time to film these cob drinking, we headed on out of the park as it was getting near to closing time. Next morning we returned to the park for a three hour game drive. The first thing we found were these water waterbuck with their white rumps. About 10 minutes further on we came upon a good sized group of giraffes bathed in the warm red early morning light. This is probably the best place in Africa to see this endangered animal.
I'd hoped to film rival males necking. And I finally got it, albeit only briefly. Finally, I had to turn myself away from these magnificent beasts and head for the exit gate. On the way out, we came upon a small group of male orobies with their stripy ears. You usually only see these as singletons, but along this road there were dozens. And that was my final view in Murchison Falls. Everything you've just seen was filmed within about 10 hours inside the park. From Murchison Falls, I went to Masindi, then by bus to Jinja, and then a short hop northwards to Bujagali on the Nile.